All right, hi guys, welcome to this video. Um, in this series, I'm going to be doing a series on learning React in 2020. Now, React has changed a lot and uh, developed in across like since it started, and there's been a lot of patterns going on and uh, that developed around React and later was integrated in React. And React has changed a lot. So the, the, this 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 tutorial is about um, teaching you how to learn React if you are just totally fresh to react and you want to learn it in 2020 uh, so i'll be focusing only on the modern stuff and the modern react of course it will include hooks it will include use context and uh, we will actually do something really cool and we'll go to that in a point in a moment let's just go through the context of uh, this uh, first video we'll talk about what is react uh, and what is react apps made of and we we'll talk about react component types the props and states and data flow in react as well and then before you take this course you have to ha know that there are some prerequisites and these are quite simple actually just modern js uh the ecma 2015 uh which includes the arrow functions the async function the, um, and promises and so on so as long as you know how to write really good uh, modern javascript you should be right so this is uh, my latest project and we will probably doing um uh something like this i'll be teaching you how to do like by the end of the course you'll be able to do anything that you can see here uh, whatever it is, to be honest. Uh, so these um, uh, weather cards basically get the weather for whatever co um, country or city you want to get. And this is the place we're going to focus on. So the course will teach you how to make this card, how to make the API requests, uh, how to change the color based on the temperature and everything. So if I type here Melton Australia and press enter, there'll be something else. And also this uh, real effect will teach you how to do that as well. Melbourne, whatever it is, all of they are the same, London and everything. Uh, so these are different, uh, these are many, many components at the same time. And we will talk about this in a second. Uh, so yeah, but this is the end results of this course. Um, hopefully I'll be able to finish this within like seven to eight videos. This is going to be a short one and I just want to give you uh, the right mindset before you start working with React. I think it's extremely important. And from the next video, we'll be talking about how to set up your, um, um, your VS code and doing the actual coding. Here as well, you can do this if you change here. Uh, I don't know, this is probably the same uh, zone. So if you do Cairo in Egypt, you can see this uh, changes in AM and this is the date and change the, um, the time as well. So yeah, um, a last thing I wanna show you here, maybe business, and uh, this is the news um, news API. So it's, <coughs> excuse me, it since I requested a news API and you can change, um, you can change the category and you can also change uh, the, 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 uh, the country and you can get different news and so on. Uh, so like I said, by the end of this really, hopefully not very long course, you can, you'll be able to do anything that I've done here. Uh, React is not that complicated to learn. You only need to know around five or four, maybe, yeah, maybe six APIs and you'll be good to go. Um, I also want to mention that this uh, video is really, really important. If you know and you grasp the mental um, m uh, model and the mental way of thinking about how to make React apps, that will give you a very good advantage for whatever you want to do with React. And if you just jump into the code, Trust me, it's, I did that and it's, it was difficult and I had to go through like one, two, three. This is my third project in React, which I can actually get to that point where I know what I'm doing. So by this video, I'm just trying to get you in the right mindset to know um, what, how React works, what it's made of, why is it so cool and how to work with it because that will give you really, really a big push and you'll be ahead of everyone else. All right, let's get to the next slide. So, okay, so what is React made of? React is basically made of components. So there are different components exactly in HTML, like you do a div and inside the div, maybe you can have a flex box and you have an image and so on. So you can, you can imagine exactly the same thing with React, but React is made of components. So when, when you think about com making components, the whole idea behind making components is to make a reusable chunks of code because you don't want to uh, make a component for maybe an, uh, a box or a card in one app, but you want to do that box or a card in another app and redo it yourself. And that's why React has created this huge ecosystem where <clears throat> excuse me, or people actually make uh, React components and share them together. And this is really good. So this is a different way of thinking about how you write your code. Now, instead of writing pages or instead of writing HTML, you are writing components. 
And the components are actually a very good way for you to imagine your app, and it's a good, it gives you a really, really good structure. We will talk about this before the end of this video. It's very important, but you have to keep this in mind. Components are good because they give you structure, and they allow you to think um, about what you want to create in terms of units. And these units are easily testable, easily shareable, easily debuggable, which is also very, very important. And th to me, this is one of the most important things. It's self-contained code. So in this course, I'll be teaching you how to use uh, JSS, which is CSS in JS. Um, it, I was absolutely against the idea when I started. I really didn't like it. I kept writing CSS in a separate file. But in my second project, when I tried to reuse some of my components, I realized how dumb it is uh, to separate uh, the CSS and JS. In my opinion, it's much, much better along the ideas of using um, a framework like React and to use reusable chunks of code is, in to, is to contain everything in the same JavaScript file. And that's why you have to deconstruct your components to smaller chunks of components because that JS file will contain everything. And I'll teach you later in the course also how to do, um, how to manage that, how to make a folder for each component and so on to make, sh make sure that you are creating really re readable components for your future self and really reusable components that contains everything. And uh, then this brings up the main question, which is what is, what can be a component? What is a component? And here, I prefer to think of in terms of responsibilities. If something uh, has to be done by a big component, that for example, look at this card. Yeah. So in this card, you have you see this card has different uh, a text that shows the location, and then an image that shows the state, and then the temperature, and then the the, the weather state as well. Now, you can make one component that includes all of this and it works just fine, but that component will be unreadable and it will be lots of code and it wouldn't be really a good experience for your future self, let aside other people, for your future self to look into that code and reuse it with other stuff. So here you need to think of terms of responsibility. So what is the responsibility of the main component. The responsibility of the main component is to change the, temp uh, the, the color based on the temperature. So that's it, that it should be a separate component. And then what is the responsibility of, uh, it's not the responsibility of the card component, which is the big component here, to change uh, the, the location or give styling to the location. No, that is a separate responsibility and hence it should be a separate component. So there should be a one component for the location and the same uh, logic extension could be uh, applied to, for example, the image. It's not the responsibility of the card to change the image uh, that reflects the state of the weather. It should be a separate uh, a component because it's a separate responsibility. Same thing with temperature, same thing with main, and all of these subcomponents are contained within one component, which is card. Now, this is a very good mental way of thinking at things because when you follow that methodology, you can actually start by writing a really big um, component and then, okay, slow down a little bit and then think about what uh, has uh, what has e what responsibility basically and what should be taken out and deconstructed into a, a separate component All right, beautiful now uh, there are different types of react components like I said I'll be focusing on the modern react But I want to give you an idea of what kind of uh, different kind of react components So we have class components and we have functional components so class components are the way react started and for a long time I think react uh, only you could only use state w only in class components. I'll get to what state is in a minute. Uh, but this is how class components works. You have to decline, uh, uh, sorry, declare it using the, the the keyword class. Class welcome extends React component, and then you render, which is a method inside that class, and you have to use this really 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 annoying thing which is called this so this dot props name dot this dot dot this dot this dot and it's it's yeah it's 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 not a very re uh, readable code people don't like that anymore and that's why after um the react team introduced hooks they also introduced functional components functional components make way much readable codes functional components i believe don't, don't quote me on that, it used to exist before, but they couldn't hold state, so they couldn't hold uh, the variables to define the reactivity of, you, of your app, and now they do. So most of this course will be simply just showing you function compo functional components, and functional components are basically almost like a function, like a normal, normal function. It's uh, function welcome uh, props, and then hello name, uh, hello props.name. 
and I'll get to that in a minute. So what is that props thingy? That uh, goes under the type of data in React. So there are two types of data in React. Of course, there's so many types of data, but I'm just saying like generally speaking, React deals with two types of data. One is props. Now props, uh, you can think of props as the arguments you pass to your functions. So they are a very simple variable. There is nothing special about props at all. And they are, what are they used for is used for passing data between component to component. And I will get that in a minute in terms of who passes components to uh, who passes data to who, which component can pass data to which uh, component. And it's actually a very uh, strong point in React uh, about React as well that the data structure is quite limited. So everything is clear when you read the code, you understand what is going on. It's not spaghetti. It's, it's definitely far away from spaghetti, which is really good. Now, uh, again, Props are functional arguments. So if you have a function called multiply and you give it two arguments, A and B, and you return A times B, it's almost the same thing. You can say something like const whether card equals, and then you give it props. These are props are going to be the arguments of that component. So this is a React component. And this is returning what? Returning hello props.name. So inside that props is an object. And inside that props, there's something called name. So when you call that component again, you can say something like weather card, and then you can render that component, which in this exact innocence is uh, almost <clears throat> is almost acting as a function, hence the name functional components. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can do weather card name equal world, and this will return hello world. So these are the props. So they are simple variables. They are used for passing data between the components themselves, and you can only think about them in terms of functional arguments. Beautiful. Next up is state. So state is extremely important, and it is what defines the reactivity in React. Think of state as a variable that can be updated, and it will trigger a re-render of your whole app. That's it. This is this is what state is, and this is the most powerful point about React, and this is what defines the reactivity, and it's used to implement reactivity in your apps. Uh, like I said, it's used to trigger a re-render, and it's responsible for all the interactivity in the apps, and this is how you define a state nowadays using hooks. So you can say, uh, this is destructuring, by the way. If you don't know destructuring, you probably need to read a bit about that in... Um, in MDN or something, but basically a uh, use state uh, function, which is a hook that React gives us, will give you back two things. So we give you back a variable and a function to change that variable, to update that variable. So we give you back a state and a function to update that state. And that's why we define use state by destructuring it into name and set name. That's basically it. If you need to know more, go ahead and read about it in MDN. And this between, um, between the parentheses here, this is the um, initial value of name. And every time you call that function set name, hello, every time you call a function that will update a state, what happens is you, um, you trigger a re-render. And this is exactly how you, you implement reactivity in React. Imagine that you take an input from the user and that input, once he presses on, um, like, I don't know, uh, a search button, you, you trigger a function that has to update one uh, state function, a state parameter, and that will trigger a re-render. So you might have, uh, once the, the, um, the user submits something, you might have the app going to the uh, API, grabbing more data, and so on. So let's talk about data flow in React. So like I said just now, data flow in React is quite strict, and that's why it makes it for a very usable and very readable code. So it's only one direction of data flow. So let's imagine what, um, the situation and the example we are going to be talking about in this course, um, which is called, for example, you have a component called weather engine. So the compo that component is the component that contains all the other components inside of it. That is the component where uh, the, the, the API requests happen, and that's the component that contains the state. All right, so that component will take that state and update it from the API and store the value in that state, and it will take that data and pass it as props to the weather card. And the weather card will change the background based on the temperature, but that weather card will also pass the same props to location, to show the location, to icon, to change the icon, and to main uh, to show whether it's cloudy or rainy or whatever, and to min temperature and max temperature. Okay, let me, let me say that again slowly, because sometimes I speak too fast. I'm sorry for this. So again, so we have one component called weather engine. This is the container component that contains the state of your app. 
right? Now, the data will come from the API to flow into the weather engine and it's going to be stored in state. That data cannot, can only go down, so it can only go to the child components, to weather card. So you can pass that data as props into weather card and the weather card will take these props and pass it to its own children components, which is location, icon main, minimum temperature and maximum temperature. Now, we also have another component called city field. We probably can put it here, you can put it inside location, you can put it wherever you want. But that city field is a child component of the weather engine component. And whenever the user um, changes the input in that city field and clicks a button, a function will be called to reset the state here. And that will trigger a re-render. Okay, I hope that's clear. Now, because of that structure and because the data only flows down from the main components to children components, that means we can specify different types of components. So you can see here that weather engine here is, it's called, usually most people refer to it as a container because it contains state and contains other components. I like to, to refer to it as an engine simply because it's doing the API requests and doing all data handling, preparing everything to be shown and passing it to the other children components. In this case, these children components are called presentation components. They do not do any data processing. They are not responsible for anything but just showing uh, the data. Uh, and then at the same time, you have elements components, which is icon, the location, and so on. So you have presentation components and you have elements components. In this case, also city field will be an element component because it will be an input and then a button or something like that. Now, some people like to make, if you use, for example, a library for components, you can use an element component that's only a button, or maybe an element component that's only a slider, and so on. So these will be elements components. But then you have container components there as well, which is going to be a, a flex component or a grid component. And that component, you can lay other components, and that component will be the engine of your app or will be uh, where you can contain your state. All right. Now, like I said just now, the city field will now trigger a re-render by reusing uh, a state function. So set name or set a location or set whatever to update that state. And once that state is updated, we trigger a re-render to change everything else and get a new API data and so on. That's it. That's it for this uh, introduction tutorial. And you can subscribe if you want to learn more about this. I'll be doing a video hopefully every two to three days. Uh, if you like this video, like it. If you dislike this video, dislike it. Let me know if you have any feedback on the way I teach. I am absolutely more than open to learn. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.